hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and here in this video we are talking about swiggy clone app and we have covered a lot many videos and this full stack application is almost uh, i can say 80 percent complete now we are covering rest of the things so in the last video we were talking about the restaurant page and the restaurant landing page where we were able to group these items now our main focus is working on uh, working on this when you click on plus and minus we should be able to use redux slices to dispatch an actions and add those items into the cart i mean we need to save it in the back end so that we can fetch the data okay so how we are doing it so i will go to the landing page here i created i think one new dish menu item which contains uh, lots of data like uh, ratings uh, delivery time price for two and this is the the dish menu item i have added so now what we will do is we are going to create the slices so this is our code right in this code we can see the dish slices there restaurant features here all slices there now we need to create a cart before that we need to bootstrap our uh, cart application cart service which we have so npm run start dev this is going to run on different port and also we can look at our nginx proxy how we need because we need to add that as a container and we don't want to run we don't want to target different different ports from the front end we can just use a one local host 80 port because their nginx is running that will help us to talk to the apis through the proxy so let's try to understand how it really works so this is our nginx container everything is inside a docker network right if you see this is all docker network okay and uh, i will just try to make it proper docker network and here is our nginx container okay i will just try to highlight this this is our nginx this will also be inside a container and now nginx will talk to these internal services so the only constraint here is we need to run all our remaining services as a docker container because then only this docker container of nginx should be able to route our request to the internal docker network so let's say these are your user service this is your another service this is your let's say card service restaurant service user service here we are doing this uh, nginx proxy of these routes to these different services so if you look at the nginx config and here this is nginx host port through which we are going to connect let's say 80 port right so nginx will do the internal routing of this request based on the path to these microservices so here if you see uh, we are just defining okay api v1 restaurant if this is request is coming on local host port 80 forward this to restaurant microservice so these are what these are these are actually container names so this is a card service card microservice this is maybe the order microservice so this is just for the local uh, local development orchestration i'm trying to explain you may use it or you may not use it that's on you so this is in this is using nginx config file so what it is doing is nginx conf file it is using that has the internal routing okay based on that routing it is forwarding your api calls to the respective services the only constraint it is putting that your all the other containers should also be inside uh, the docker network currently we are just running them locally outside the directly on the host machine they are not as a docker container what we have inside docker is these databases these are already inside our docker network we can just when you create a docker compose file and put all these things together they are by default create will be created inside a network you can also specify the name of the network if you want let's say swiggy clone network right there you have all these services as a container database as a container nginx also as a container so this is all going to happen internally and how you are going to talk to the database you won't be using the host port like uh, in the here we are specifying the the port mapping if you see docker compose override so this is the host port this is the container port so your database your containers will use this port and 
uh, your docker container let's say i have this service running on 3001 one microservice right so they all will use this internal port exposed by the containers so we don't need to use 5433 5436 5438 because they these are individual containers right different different containers and they are not like on the same host machine where you cannot cannot have a same port these are individual tiny even two instances you can say and you can directly connect to 5432 5432 5432 from different services this is how you can play with the orchestration i will just come up put the docker compose docker compose override and this nginx config and also we need to have a docker file for these services so that when you do docker compose up all the services on the respective port can be bootstrapped and all the the network is active with all the services nginx container all three databases and then you will be just accessing this through this nginx only localhost port 80 and forward slash api v1 cart api v1 order api v1 restaurant this is how you play with end to end with the docker docker network docker compose docker containers here you will write docker file also for these microservices we already have a docker uh, docker image postgres image already coming from docker hub you need to create a docker file in each and every microservice and then you need to reference that in your docker compose file so those are like, like some additional steps which we can perform once we have everything running we will run this on the docker network okay coming back to our uh, apis for now this is our card service i can just look at the card service might be running on let me just close this so we can see things clearly localhost 3002 let me just see if it should be 3001 this is a restaurant service then it can be three docs i'm just let me check the the port for the card service go to env this is 3004 and i hate this random assignment of the port Okay, what happened? API V1 card, localhost. Okay, we need to make our uh, life easier by specifying the correct port mappings. So what we will do is we will go to the readme and we will try to update our uh, API specs. So we need to create a tiny table and there we can specify okay which service is using which port. So we can avoid any confusion and we will just follow that uh, pattern only okay so here we can see application services and that is for the end user also who wants to use this application application services and here this is the application proxy will be using port 80 user service which is we don't have user service we have a restaurant service i think i created a tiny user service let's use that which is a user reference service that is using 3000 so here we need to make these ports uh, really nice 3001 go to your main.ts we will be using process.env.port otherwise we will be using 3001 okay so that is user service update your readme file okay this is 3001 then we have restaurant service card service order service delivery service restaurant service Card service, order service, payment service, and finally the delivery service. And we need to have one service which is not going to be uh, exposing the REST interface, but that will be running as a listener service. So, our, how our architecture will evolve, I will talk about that payment, delivery, and the listener service, or you can say mq service or mq listener service that will have access to the different databases and will uh, update lots of data okay so user service 3001 the restaurant service will put 3002 update the port to 3002 and update your main.ts where you are passing the port 3002 then we have what is the next one is uh, card service we will put 3003 Card service 3003 will go to card service, env, 
port 3003 go to main.ts update your port 3003 card service then there is an order service we will just put that as 3004 go to main.ts put your port so get it from the env otherwise we are by default hard coding 3004 and then i will just create a copy of this which is a payment service where we are going to integration with a stripe at the front end payment service and go to your package json payment service payment service will be on 3005 what did we put here 3004 so payment service will be 3005 go to main.ts or 3005 so we are good here let's uh, put these in the readme also order service is 3004 payment service 3005 and rest we will build so delivery service so let's say 3006 and why i'm able to create these microservices simply because i already have these packages everywhere right these packages are being used in the services so i don't need to duplicate lots of code i'm just duplicating only the domain logic so payment service here i will have a delivery service right and this is go to your change your scope delivery service i mean just update the config and all these things the delivery service package json and here inside a main.ts let's put 3006 same as dot env 3006 now we have almost all the services we need to have a one microservice which is going to listen for asynchronous events 3006 and then RevitMQ listener service okay this also we can bootstrap because what this service is going to be a pure uh, nest.js microservice listening to the RevitMQ so if you nest.js microservices this is what we are going to use here we are already using nest.js everywhere so it's better that we use the simple microservices using uh, RevitMQ so RabbitMQ is something which we can orchestrate using Docker Compose and there will be a listener service which is so how this architecture is going to be this is going to evolve a lot but here I will try to draw something that you can just try to correlate these are our microservices right payment will do some event emit, event emit right once we do order service when you cancel the order once you deliver the order then we also need to acknowledge that uh, through the email through the notification okay the uh, order has been delivered or order has been cancelled so there are lots of events will be emitted so this, these are our origin services who are going to generate events and this is the target services i mean if we use the cloud environment then we can just use the sns and there can be sns tiny services sns handlers like you send a topic to this sns or sqs and then there is a lambda handler which is going to handle these particular events but here we are talking about known cloud cloud environment first so what we'll do is here is our big listener service you can say listener microservice right and here it is like a like event producer right So what event it will produce let's say payment service payment has been completed right for a particular order so i will send this message through this uh, event based microservices nest.js microservices and to a rabbit mq right similarly there will be another microservice going to emit an event to rabbit mq there will be another service payment delivery service sorry delivery service which will emit the event uh, that item the food menu item has been delivered so instead of creating a listener microservice separately separately i can have one monolith there is no harm in it instead of creating three or four more services because this listener service can have access to different database it can have access to the uh, order order db okay it will have a uh, access to the payment db
and it will have access to the delivery DB because we need to update the status many places what this listener service will do you will send asynchronous events through these services and there is a listener microservice in the nest js which is listening to this uh, kafka sorry rabbit mq uh, from different different topics here you can have multiple clients let's say you don't want to confuse things so here instead of this this can be a topic one or mqs because here we are using queues not uh, sns topics so let's say this is a q1 right this is going to be a q2 which is interested only in the order related events order cancelled order delivered and this is q3 which is going to be interested in delivery status delivered delayed or whatever the message because message delivery guy the order delivery guy can also emit a different events because when you are uh, because most of these applications are gps enabled and you can say keep sending uh, the gps coordinates and the device applications like websocket events and then those devices can track the geo position of the vehicle the delivery guy this is how it happens real time through the websockets okay this is the q1 which is interested in okay you made the payment you created it when you do the checkout you created an order in the draft status now once you have done the payment through the stripe we will send an event through this uh, order service or through the payment service payment uh, complete so then we need to uh, update the status of the order is like order placed right then actually the delivery partner will be assigned all those things so let's say order placed what will happen it should create two events first of all when you have done the payment let's say i have done the payment service this is a payment service right what it will do is once you've done the payment to the stripe successfully i will raise two events first is payment uh, complete right it can be just one event or two events assign delivery guy payment complete payment complete will uh, update the order status to order complete and it will also emit another event is assign delivery partner to this particular order which belongs to this order id this restaurant id and these are the menu items or and this is the address so all these events will be handled by the listener service listener service has access to the, all this information i mean i want to create it as a monolith because it has access to all the data so it can trigger an update to any particular entity based on the events coming from the producer services this is how the simple architecture it is going to have so we will be using nest.js rabbitmq based uh, tiny service but it will be listening to the multiple queues here you can see here i created a nest.js microservice and it is listening to the queues uh, do we have okay this is the client which is producing the uh, the events because i'm listening to the same rabbitmq on the port this is the cats queue so here you can actually so there are two things either you can create a multiple simple simple services because you can listen to the same rabbitmq host but on different queues so one uh, nestjs microservice will be listening to the q1 on this host will be handling those particular type of events so there will be dedicated queues and tiny tiny services listening to those events and updating the database that is also a fine idea i think because we are not doing uh, so much code inside these we will receive the event we will receive the payload and do the update in the database for the status and acknowledgement and all sort of things so it's going to be interesting so we are just close what we are building right now is we just configured all these ports and this is our card service i was just checking the api spec for the cart which is i think running on let's start this thing okay go to nx and we can see our new services card service i can just do npm run start dev and this is now running on 3002 okay this is not good where it is running then this uh, maybe i did started something else okay this is the card service env 3003 okay start service so it is just accepting only the menu item object whenever you are just adding and then 
count uh, we should be increasing the count in the service when you are adding the same menu item again and again i just wanted to check that logic how it is happening okay it is just uh, okay what it is doing is first of all it is just checking there is an existing cart then what it is doing it is doing a push of that menu item so here we need to make it little smart because user might be adding the same menu item twice then we need to increase the count okay instead of uh, just doing a push here so existing card dot menu items here i got the items existing items so this is when you already have the existing card existing items dot menu item and here i can just say okay const is new item so i can just do existing items So here I will just do existing items. Is it a const? So existing items dot uh, ta -ta -ta find simple find operation we can do with i dot id which is a food menu item id and we are getting something in the payload. So we will just use payload dot menu item dot because they are, we are passing only single object, single food menu item. So if it is is new item if it is found then i just need to do the negation here so if it is true that means it's not a new item or we don't need to do the negate here i will do it is new item if it is a new item which is true okay it's all variable naming is new item then it should return a false so we should change this to something like this is item exists that's a good naming right if item exists it will be an object and then here we can do the negation if item doesn't exist that means we can just do the push because item doesn't exist so here existing items dot push otherwise we need to play with this here i will just do existing items because i found the items i can just increase the count maybe existing items dot count equal to existing item item exist because this is item exist dot count equal to item exists dot count count plus one okay what i'm doing here is i found that item okay it doesn't look good what i need to do existing cart that is just a boolean no i got the menu items here i'm just uh, checking if this object exists okay i found it then i'm just doing push otherwise no no it, it won't work like this what we need to do is uh existing items here what we are doing existing card dot menu items dot items so this should be the items existing items dot push here what we need to do is inside existing items we need to find that node element so we need to run a map and it's fine that if it is returning us uh, the new item so what we will do is existing items equal to existing items dot map we need to increase the count of one property or one object so if uh, this is the condition we need to pass if this is the case if this is the case then i dot count equal to i dot count plus one return i otherwise return i so what it is doing it is just uh, looking at to, into the existing items only and increasing the count for that menu item and just assigning it otherwise 
if it is a brand new just push that to the items okay what is this existing items not cart existing items dot push simple you can also let's look into this again so let's say if there is a cart already exists for the user and the restaurant we got the menu items and then we are checking the new past menu item does exist if it does exist if it does exist then we need to iterate on to the existing menu items which we just have increase the count property and we are doing it through the map and reassigning the existing items okay and then putting it in the menu items object and saving it it's like an update if it is a brand new that means that menu item it's like total empty then we will just do the push okay we can play with this api and test it so first of all we need to get the the token because this is protected api so i will just try to reload the page and try to see the token so this is my access token i will authorize my apis okay i'm currently logged in user so i'll just try to add this into the menu item okay count one let's say count two count three you can see now this is good in the menu items i'm just increasing the count so on the front end we don't need to deal with the duplicates what i'm adding you can just keep adding sending the objects whatever you are sending i will deal with that and while removing here also we need to change the logic right because you might remove it you may have to remove it th uh, three times let's say if you have added it uh, three times either you clear the item or you just pass this three times as an object i mean look this looks like uh, we can improve this a lot because let's say if user is deleting instead of decreasing the count if user is just simply deleting this menu item right then we should provide an api okay from this card just remove that particular uh, menu item no matter whatever is the count that you can extend right so here if i just try to get my cart here i can see that i have added it three times this particular item and based on that we'll calculate the price price 500 so it will be become 1500 total price which user needs to pay okay so we are good here let's try to do the integration on the front end so what we need to do is we need to build a cart slice for this so this is the cart container cart service go to a front end application now the application code is growing application components redux and here is the cart so this is existing logic we have written we don't need to worry about it here we are going to write a cart slice i will just copy this dish slice from here i will put it and here is my reducer so i will just say cart and i'm just creating cart reducer cart reducer from the cart reducer that's good auth reducer why it is complaining okay it was just a funny type script thing okay now cart reducer here we are going to create a cart slice it should be pointing to cart slice and here i mean for now we can just go with the flow and here instead of that we will fetch the cart data because you may reload the page and coming after some time then we need to reflect your cart items whatever they were earlier okay so let's change our logic so let's update our cart cart slice uh, i will say so just rename it to cart slice.ts and what we need here is on landing page we need to fetch uh, like on the restaurant landing page we need to fetch the cart menu items right so fetch cart data so from our ui 
we need to provide an interface okay you can also go to cart component directly here okay, this is some, some errors due to the data but you can go to cart directly from the home page also like from here so we need to fetch the cart status what is the cart right now so here instead of fetch dishes we will just pass fetch cart okay that we need to define here another static method fetch cart and that is all happening with the help of current user session right let's check the api i think we are passing the restaurant id okay just a user id to fetch this so we need to just pass we are already passing the authorization header that will take care of uh, this thing okay fetch cart here api v1 cart that's the simple url we have we don't need any arguments so this is fetch cart i need to specify the port also because currently we are doing proxy i think from package json we are doing proxy to this api endpoint now the question is how the proxy will handle the multiple endpoints here we are currently not using the docker right so let's see that so here we can use uh, this particular solution i mean if you want to redirect to a one particular api endpoint then package.json is enough here i'm creating proxy but right now we have i have like three or four different services either i use nginx and use the docker containers which i want to avoid right now because i need to spin up lot many containers so what i will do is i can just create uh, this setup proxy here there is some documentation so inside src create a setup proxy.js let's create this file and see if it works setup proxy.js and here we need to use this module right which is HTTP proxy middleware so let's add this uh, module in our pnpm in our package json so go to our code swiggy app and pnpm add HTTP proxy middleware So what it will do is it will add this module for us and here we will do the routing api v1 api v1 restaurant so let's use our readme file to get all the the ports which we have and go to our proxy of react app and let's configure something so what do we have here is api v1 restaurant service you also need to change check the the routes is it on 3002 okay i need to run the services first of all this is the restaurant service npm run start dev this is user service npm run start dev so i can see things clearly so this is docs this is my restaurant service so the path is api v1 restaurants and dishes you can see these are the two main path I have that is running on 3002. So here my proxy path will be API v1 restaurants. So we will just configure multiple middlewares. Let's see if it really works like this. API use, uh, let's say API v1 dishes, then it will go to. So we need to go to the specified port. Restaurant service is running on 3002. So API v1 restaurant because we need a wildcard also like all the requests after this will get added to this so we need to think uh, if it really works here then we have a api v1 dishes that is going to be forwarded on 3003 api okay it's the same restaurant service right api v1 dishes then we have api v1 card so that should go to 3004 and there is one more service api v1 user that is on 3001 i guess that is a user service 3001 okay api v1 users so here instead of this i will do api v1 users that is on 3001 
so for users for restaurant for dish for the cart okay and i will restart my react app that is my react app i will restart it there is some errors let's fix that first so i will start my react app uh, which is here Okay, and you can see these proxy path has been created, right? For localhost 3002, but that is some problem. Proxy path created for this to this. Uh, we need to see the documentation, how we are creating setting of the proxy because it is saying every forward slash request is forwarding this. Because I want Nginx like proxy created here okay here i'm trying to play with this a little bit let's start our server and let's see if this is really working so okay something is working i will just check okay proxy created so here we are using this proxy middleware right i tried different solution if i just show you what i was doing under the hood okay this is my first solution second solution even before that I was trying to do something like this, right? I was just rewriting the path, but here we need to pass the target. So I will just change this solution to something like this. And what it is saying is I have created a multiple middlewares, right? So when it is a, so we can use this particular auth URL name, API URL name. Let's say we can say, okay, whenever the request is coming for from the front end, something like this http localhost let's say localhost 3001 this is like let's say where we are running this application from there if you are hitting api v1 users so it should redirect you to the users microservice right so here i'm talking about this api v1 users then it should take you to the api v1 users let's see this is running on 3001 and this is a restaurant so this will go to 3002 api v1 restaurants this is the endpoint which we are going to hit similarly we can configure other middlewares so here api v1 3000 3 that is for the cart api v1 cart and that is for cart similarly there is i think dishes also same as restaurant so if let's say if you are hitting the url something like this then it will take you to the dishes okay so it looks like this would work because this is a restaurant api both this is the cart api which is 3003 3001 is the users now if i restart my application i will terminate this and i it will restart my react app then what will happen is we can just see the path which it is creating there are console logs which i added i can just remove them okay now if i try to read the path it has created this rule for api users okay this is for api view and restaurant okay let's uh, see this in the real picture if it is really working uh, what i'm hitting i need to remove this proxy path from my packageson so we can take this in the picture i will be hitting 3000 only so let's say card slice here we have external api right so this is a single place where we need to update and we are already hitting 3000 port so let's see our ui is rendering or not okay i have started a user service so that user service should be using 3001 and the port here is 3001 so what is running on 3000 then 
3000 okay let me see api v1 users it is going to this port api v1 users now i got the issue because what happening is when you are hitting localhost 3000 it should render your front end application but it is redirecting your application to the users api directly from this proxy middleware we have created that's not good we need to fix that source set a proxy because all the requests which it is getting let's say if i pass the path of api api use either it will rewrite let's see how it works and we'll restart this application this is the concept of uh, creating a proxy middleware from the front end now where it is taking us is it rendering the front end okay somehow finally we got the front end rendering on 3000 and now this api you can see api v1 users api v1 restaurant so that's not good again it is uh, overriding the routes right so we are hitting api v1 restaurant and it is forwarded with the api v1 users oh so let's say because all middlewares will get override like this so if if i just use api v1 users then only use this api v1 restaurant then only use this api v1 dishes api v1 cart now there is a segregation we have done let's reload this i think reload will not work we need to restart the middleware so i will restart the application I haven't done this in the, the past like how it really works the creating a middleware for multiple apis and i think this worked right you can see so what change we have done 3000 it is rendering our application let's see the whole configuration now api even user that specific route will take care of taken care by this so there is no wildcard handling all the requests api v1 restaurant api v1 dishes with the restaurant api api v1 cart with the cart api so you don't need to worry about what we are hitting so here i can see all the apis are giving me the required data which i needed right so here we are able to orchestrate uh, this service based without using the docker compose without putting all the nodejs in the containers and using the nginx proxy because this is also doing the same thing it's like proxying the request to the different uh, services running on different ports here we have these different different port and different services so okay next thing we are doing here is uh, we need to worry about okay how we are adding the items to the cart so there are two dispatch actions like when you click on to this add menu to the cart add item to the cart remove item to the cart these are the two actions we need to perform here so what we will do is we already have a cart slice we'll go to the redux cart cart slice so what we are doing through the cart slice we are fetching the the cart menu items fetch cart api v1 cart i think that is our api we also need to keep checking if uh, we are using the correct api spec cart is on 3003 docs so this is the api v1 cart we are good api v1 cart and cart slice which is fetching the cart and here fetch dishes it should be fetch cart items and here this is the api data this is the cart state api data okay initial state is cart state because it's going to be having just a simple data fetch cart item so when we talk about fetch cart item there will be three different state fetch cart item fulfilled pending and rejected fetch cart items fulfilled rejected and this is going to deal with the cart state 
which contains the API data. And here, this is how top uh, like cart menu items, right? Cart items. This is a selector, which is just uh, going inside our cart object and giving us the data. Okay, so I will just simply do is cart dot cart dot because it's a state dot cart dot so inside state it is cart state dot cart dot data but when you add it to the root reducer it will become cart dot cart and then you can access the data inside it and this is your cart slice dot reducer this is what we are exporting so it's only fetching uh, if there is anything inside your cart so we can just invoke this even on the landing page of restaurant landing page or otherwise there is a checkout component checkout page there we are going to get this information so checkout page or inside a restaurant page we are at the bottom we are using this cart component you can see this cart component and this is what we are rendering like okay do you have items inside the cart so here what we can do is like fetching going to the landing page also we can fetch this data so we are inside the restaurant and here we are already dispatching some actions on fetch so here we can do a dispatch one more and it will be a fetch cart items fetch cart items is going to use this api v1 cart apis and going to give me the data let's see our apis now so on this landing page now we have added one more api it is giving unauthorized that is expected because now this cart data is associated with your session we need to pass the authorization header okay this is uh, firebase and here we are storing the cookies and this is also inside a redux if you look into our redux state we if you look into auth auth token we have auth dot current user auth dot current user dot token or auth dot token is also another property so we can access our current state inside our uh, asynchronous actions and can get the current state okay so we will access our data so we can get our current state inside our cart slice how this really works is this is the argument you are passing and the second argument is the destructured get state okay and here we can call our state equal to get state this you need to call so this is how you can get your current state object and this state is of uh, type any it should resolve and then through this what we can do is we can create a configuration header const headers or you can see const config equal to here we need to get the token right token equal to state dot auth dot token and then we can create a configuration header const config config equal to we can just pass the headers and there we can just set authorization and we can just pass the bearer token and we are getting token from there we'll just pass this configuration header object this config object so if you are passing any argument then that is fine otherwise it will it will take a config object as an option and config is the the same exios config object which card config you can pass do we have exios proxy config there should be some type we'll put this here and here in the exios.get url 
you can see we can pass config xgos.get uh, url name and uh, config so what is the config object config request config object contains all these things which contains the header object inside the header we are passing you can see this is the header which contains a content type authorization and all right this is a headers so we are passing the same config object through our slice so cart item headers okay why it is complaining can't follow the optional parameter filters fetch cart items why there is no need of filter we are not passing any filter but there is an argument like if you are passing any argument then you just keep it optional and this is of type any okay i can just exclude this thing Is, i think this is uh, stopping our server so it is just saying okay typescript required parameter cannot follow an optional parameter what if both are optional parameter so we make it optional or just use the get state so it should give us the current redux state we are getting the token passing the token inside authorization header okay i know it will break because we are not passing that config object config object is something which we are creating by ourselves right so i'm overriding that uh, fix by passing null here i was not able to override that error so for now i'm just fixed that by passing null as a first argument and that is required so at least for now we can get rid of this and get state it will give me the current state and uh, we are just passing this authorization header or we can just pass this state object and this external API will deal with this how to construct a config object so now let's uh, reload our page and see what is happening okay first cart API unauthorized right because let's reload this and try to debug this a little bit so we are inside a cart slice so here I'm doing some mistakes and I'm showing you how we can debug and try to see what is happening so this is filtered data okay here we got the state config object so state dot auth which is an object token is null because what is happening the page is getting reloaded so we don't have the state initialized so what we need to do we need to wait until the state has been initialized then we make a api call right or we can check okay in the state do we have the user object then only we trigger the api call so what we can do is instead of doing this we can just copy this and we can just pass our auth selector the current auth data if in this current auth data if we get auth.token then only make an api call and whenever the auth state is getting changed we will always be checking this so this is the right way of doing it so we will be just fetching the cart menu items once you have landed to the uh, to any page and where your session has been initialized so we can reload the page and we can just see reload the again and see what is happening i can see the cart is being called only once and here i can see the token being passed right this is in the authorization header we are passing this bearer token and i can see the api coming from a response coming from the api this is the menu items with the count three this is the panitica ingredients and thumbnail okay there were there was one slight change we have done now the menu item thumbnail is not an array this is just an object so that we will change because we want to make it consistent everywhere so in the card service source app domain I think this is simple JSON object. So we need to change our DTO to adopt accordingly. So this is our menu item DTO and this is our thumbnail. This should be of type string. And this is a simple URL, not a string array because we are uploading only single image. 
thumbnails or whatever you want to call it okay now it's look correct uh, we will just delete this one and uh, then we will try to get the data again so here now through the card slice we are getting the data now we need to add two more actions which is add menu item to the cart and remove item to the cart this is fetch and here you can see our api call is api v1 cart that is being proxied to 3003 port through this proxy middleware now we can work on the cart slice i'm going little slow otherwise uh, when i just do things very very quickly then people are having complaint so i will go a little slow swiggy app and then now we can work on the cart slice sometimes i also get confused on which page i was working on this is cart and i will go to the redux yes this is cart slice so we need to add two more actions here which is one is add item to the cart remove item from the cart add cart item and remove cart item and uh, earlier we were not showing this plus minus icons on the ui because what we want is we want to have user logs logged in already then only he or she should be able to see the menu items so here if i just click on any menu item so we will see this plus minus right so what we can do is because this api will fail if you just click plus minus where you are not even logged in so you should be able to add something in the cart if you are logged in so that we can use a user selector there so we are inside our cart slice first of all i will add these actions which is add items to the cart so here is add cart item we need to change the action name this is remove cart item And we need to handle this so because the state is still going to be the same the cart object what we need to do if you are adding something then uh, either we can actually fetch the data again or we do the calculation at the front end side so there are two options once you add and remove fetch the the latest data again and populate that in the redux state or whenever you are doing add and remove update your this cart object based on that because inside cart you have a cart menu items cart dot data you can see here you are assigning action dot payload inside cart and this action dot payload is the object which you are getting inside that we have a menu items that will change you will add or remove items from that so let's do the copy paste here for these three items I mean you don't need to deal with these three different actions differently you can just do only one if it is fulfilled because we are not going to show the loading or uh, these different states so I will just use the, the fulfilled state for both these add and remove this fulfilled and that fulfilled so you won't feel like okay lots of duplicate code we are writing this is fulfilled and this is add cart items we are dealing with only fulfilled actions so cart state action will have action or payload when you are doing a when you are adding the menu items to the cart okay so let's see what we are doing when you are adding the items to the cart are we returning the whole payload again let me try this because we can just use the response and populate our redux state directly from that so this is my react app now i can just copy the token from these api calls which i'm sending i don't need to copy it from somewhere else this is my authorization header this is my cart uh, service i mean we need to update these new labels here now if i want to create something that i know this is how we are creating item dot thumbnail start must be a string that is correct we have recently changed it so whenever you create similarly let's say when you update and uh, what happens we can populate these menu items that's good enough to populate the data inside a redux state 
and what happens when you update and delete okay so count is one this is update so update means you are adding something do we really need this api because we can just add and we can just delete if i want to delete i can use this api to decrease the count okay i just deleted this update okay so we can just use the post and delete put we can just dump and let's change this code a little bit so we are doing things on the fly sorry for that so domain cart controller service cart service when you are creating the menu items this works fine update i think we don't need update so i will just remove this from the controller also put delete means you can just remove an element you are just passing the menu item and i will just delete that but there are two scenarios let's say if there is a menu item already exists and you have to just decrease the count if there is only single menu item then you just need to remove that menu item from the menu items array so this is how it is going to work so we are just checking okay there is an existing cart with this if the, if you are deleting something which doesn't exist then not found exception here now we are checking updated menu items okay here we are saying is i dot id matched with this then we don't need to do filter so here we need to do two things if there is only item count uh, one then obviously it will get deleted so we just need to do map and then filter so map inside this map we will just check the condition if So if this is true, that means first of all, if this is true, right? What we need to do is i dot count i dot count equal to i dot count minus one. Just decrease the count first because we don't know if there is there are multiple count and then filter whatever the array element we are getting out of it. We can run a filter on that and just keep only those where the count is greater than zero i dot count what happened with this existing card dot menu items let me just see okay this is then we are applying filter this is closing of this okay we are doing map forget about this return i return i and then we can do filter on top of that so inside in, in the filter what we are saying is i dot count if this is greater than zero then just only keep it so updated menu items this is how the delete will work and we are fine with this so if i just play with the delete so first i will just do the post okay i keep increasing the the menu item types so two this is add this has been added three times and if you just change the menu item id to something else then we got two menu items right so first of all i will just use this and i will try to delete so this uh, menu item should be removed now we have only one and now i can use this id 009 so I will decrease the one quantity. I got the two quantity now. I will decrease one more time. I got the quantity one. Decrease one more time. It's gone. So we can be rely we can just totally rely on the APIs and whatever we are getting from the response, we can put that in our Redux state. That's the the summary of the this whatever we have done. So go to our APIs. Sorry, front end app source redux cart slice here whatever the cart object we have we can just get it from the action dot payload add cart item remove cart item 
this is enough action load payload and now i can start sending my payload so here in add cart items we need to pass the payload also so how we are going to send payload and we'll create a type for this so fetch cart items so here we need to update this to add cart items and remove cart items add cart items and remove cart items and we are passing config so how axios works axios dot put where we are not we you to pass uh, the payload and config object so i'm passing payload and config here i'm passing payload and config add cart items so the the action will be here is add cart items and remove cart items here we are getting payload and the config i need to do lots of refactoring by removing these any so here exios dot get what we are passing uh url config and the payload this config has the payload so here this is exios dot post so add cart item will be post and this would be a delete i mean this could be a put also but a delete is fine so in the delete url config i think everything goes inside this we are passing the url and then we pass the payload so this should be url payload and config okay exios dot delete i mean delete should not have a payload uh, from the standard rest api definition that here we are passing either i need to convert this into post so here is a url payload and config so let's do this put instead of delete that's more appropriate put means okay you are updating this resource and do i need to change the api specs so put specifically means is okay i want to remove it for now let's consider it like this and i will update this api spec inside cart service cart controller instead of delete this we are just making it put so this is actually accepting the payload body because this is what you want to remove otherwise we could have created only one uh, put have which where we can pass two actions okay add and remove as a action type as a query parameter that would be have been better but for now it will work so let's go to our ui start service figgy app source slice here we are calling this cart items remove cart items payload and config so here we are doing put because delete won't accept that argument so payload and config response.data so after this whatever we are getting we are populating that in the redux state now we need to plug these two actions to the ui components so let's do the integration this is our restaurant page right and these are the two components from where we are adding and removing items dish category wise okay we got all the dishes so we are running a loop and we are just putting each and every food menu items like this so here there are two methods add handle remove from cart handle add to cart and we already get the restaurant id so i will just construct the payload like that handle add to cart restaurant id restaurant id will be we are getting already from the parent component 
and then menu item which is an object because this is our api spec look like menu item object that contains the food menu item which we are adding and removing so this is add to cart this is remove from cart and this is actually dish menu item which we are getting from the api calls same we can configure on to another page so this is dish search component we are getting the handle add to cart handle remove from cart these we can import these are like the dispatch actions and here we don't need to pass this we just need to pass the food object handle add and handle remove okay so this is dispatching add cart items and this is dispatching remove from cart item and what it will do is it will trigger an api call and where user is already logged in so let's see how success we are getting okay so there is some error we can reload this that is coming from this category wise dot tsx this category wise dot tsx okay there are two places from where we are adding the items to the cart i think that is one here so we are passing only food object I mean the selected dish menu items where you are clicking plus and minus and now i should be able to click on to this and dispatch some action it is giving us bad request why because menu items is it menu item or menu item dot count must be a number confronting to specified constraint okay this i was expecting because the the count item we orchestrate by ourselves right oh front end can decide so we need to update something in the apis because you won't be sending you will be sending only the payload here we are deciding we are populating this uh, count property from ourselves. so this count when you item count is number that is we are not going to pass from the front end we are just passing the payload and then cart service will decide it so if you are adding this for the first item first time i mean we can just populate this in the dto but it will be is optional and inside the cart service when you are adding items to the first time so existing cart if it is existing cart we will do it like this if not then we are doing it like this existing item otherwise we are pushing the menu item object so here inside the payload dot menu item i can set the count also count equal to one because i am adding the first menu item and yes this should work now i can just increase this count decrease this count and remove the element now if i click on plus minus where is this coming from i need to remove this stringify statement so it is coming from new bar this is really a big state object i will reload this and i will try to see now by clicking on to those plus my min minus buttons okay is it happening anything doing something okay it is sending this and we got this menu item object if what if i click on another item another item another item so it is making these api calls and you can see it keeps adding these items i clicked on many items why it is adding only few
okay let's see so count should be i need to fix the count property but yeah we are getting the venue item and i think the redux state is also populated with the same so let's uh, add cart item where is our cart object cart cart data menu items and yeah yes you can see this this is actually your shopping cart object which we have populated from by clicking onto these different menu items okay so if i just do now what we need to do these actions are going it is updating the data now next thing we need to do is when you remove the items and add the items we need to populate that inside our cart state so that is already happening it just like inside this cart component we need to read the redux state and populate whatever you have added inside a cart okay so let's debug this uh, what i was doing is i was just playing with the ui and try to see if this logic really works i mean this is not a production ready code i'm just writing and showing you the demo at the same time so here you can see i'm adding the menu items removing the menu items first of all let me clear the database so i will go to the database clear the entry and now reload the page and my redux state is currently empty if i try to show you my redux dev tools inside cart menu items we don't have any data no it's an empty it should be an empty array or an empty object not uh, double quotes okay for now so now if i click on plus four times i will go to the network tab i added this item four times so this item i can see four times now what i will do is i will add this two times i will add some other item two times and then one time so final my redux state should look like this four six three two one count is one right so I, there is a small silly mistake i made you can see here what is this totally wrong right i need to remove it that's why all the conditions were becoming true and it was updating the count for each and every item that's really not true so now it will work as expected i fix the bug and now if i click on to this it will be just updating the count for this particular item six two four let's say i'm doing it for this item currently the problem is all these items look same similar i can see that this item has been added and has been added five times so it's not updating the all count of all the items so this is my redux state which i need to populate in the right hand side here and when you click on to, to the cart there also you should be able to see all these menu items available there so next video we'll working on the cart object and the cart state